Okay, so we've covered state governments and we've covered the comparing and contrasting of the Florida and United States Constitution. Where we go now is we're going to look at the powers, services of the federal, state, and local governments. Um, but before we do that, we have to go back and look at what is federalism. This all ties in to the principle of federalism. And federalism is, the, is a system of government that shares power between the national and the state governments. Our national or federal government is called the United States. And that is seated in Washington, D.C. There are 50 other state governments in the United States. 50 states, 50 governments. Um, federal government, it's our national government. Um, there are many powers of the federal government. Uh, it has the most types of powers, um, but as you'll see, uh, more of the laws, more of the responsibilities fall within the state and local governments. First one is delegated powers. Um, delegated powers, those are specific powers given in the federal government. Uh, so these are all types of delegated powers. They're just powers that the federal government has. Uh, express powers. Those are powers directly listed in the Constitution. For example, writing federal law is a expressed power of the United States government. Conducting treaties, um, supporting the military, all those are expressed powers. They are directly stated within the Constitution. Um, so this is what is, it, whatever the Constitution says, you can find it in it. It is directly listed in the Constitution. The next one is implied powers. Uh, they're not written in the Constitution, but they are necessary and proper in order to carry out the express powers. Now I highlighted necessary and proper because part of the Constitution says that there are some uh, that there are some laws that are necessary and proper for the Constitution, for the, excuse me, the uh, federal government to carry out. So that's called the Necessary and Proper Clause. Uh, that is also known as the Elastic Clause. Um, remember Elastic Clause when we talked about the Constitution. Uh, an example of this would be um, the United States forming the Air Force. The express power is to support the military, to create a military. The Air Force is not in the Constitution. So, it is implied that the federal government has that express powers. Another way to look at implied powers is the implied powers help the federal government conduct or do the express power. So this helps the federal government carry out their express power. Again, with the Air Force. Um, in order to support the military in today's time, the government, it is implied, can create the Air Force to help support the military. These things, these help the express powers. And then inherent powers, they're not listed in the Constitution, but are necessary for the government to function. For example, when it comes to uh, regulations or uh, bills or powers, let's say, with the post office. The post office is an express power, but let's say cutting it back to Saturdays, that would be an inherent power if it helps it. Things that help with the express or implied are inherent. It's just, you know, you need that power so that the federal government can function. Some examples of services that the federal government provides are post offices, supporting military, providing money, um, welfare programs, defending the nation, um, ensuring uh, civil liberties, these are just a few examples. We're going to look at more later on. Okay, so the next type of government that we look at is the state government. State governments 
are exactly as they sound. They're the government of a state, for example, Florida. State governments have powers as well, and this was established in the Tenth Amendment. We call those powers reserved powers. Powers not given to the federal government, GOV dot, but are not denied to the states. This was written in the Tenth Amendment, uh, and essentially what it's saying is, okay, the states, listen up. We've given the federal government all of these powers, and we've denied some of them to them. So if we have not denied you, the states, any power, and we've not given them to the federal government, then you have those powers. And we're going to look a little bit into those powers uh, later. They kind of overlap with some of the federal government powers, but, you know, it gives them more freedom. That's why you saw in the Florida Constitution why they could talk about education and marriage and, and fishing lines off the coast of Florida because they have that power that the federal government does not have. Some services, and we'll get into those, uh, we'll get into more of these um, throughout the lesson, is that they regulate local government, and they can have driver's license, business license, uh, teacher certificates. Uh, I had to go through the state government to be certified to teach. And then fire and highway safety, any, any state programs that deal with the entire state. Concurrent powers. Now, there are some powers that the federal government and the states share. They overlap. And those are powers that belong to the federal and state government. So they both have them. Here are some examples. Taxes. Roads. Um, for example, you know, when it comes to uh, maintaining I-95. When it comes to State Road 7, just off the... Uh, just to our west over here. All of those are type of responsibilities uh, for the state. Uh, and they deal with roads. Borrowing money. States can borrow money. The federal government can borrow money. Make and enforce laws. Uh, that's through the legislative and executive branch. Spend money for the general welfare. Again, some welfare programs are more than others. And then charter banks allow businesses in these states. Those are just a few we're going to look at. Um, and to show a better example of, uh, a, of federalism and how the Bowers are divided, I've created this Venn diagram right here is federal. The red circle is states. For the federal government, you have in this side, they, the express implied inherent powers are all within this circle. To the right is the states, and their powers are from reserved powers. So the state powers are reserved powers, federal powers are expressed, implied, and inherent. And then what they share is concurrent powers. And that's just, you know, the ability to tax is both a federal power and a state power. Lastly, that brings us to local government, and local government is just the government within either our county, like Palm Beach County, or a municipality, which is normally a city, uh, such as Lake Worth, Lantana, Wellington. So, municipalities, there are more cities, Lake Worth, Lantana, Wellington, county, Palm Beach County, um, Fort Piers, I'm not Fort Piers County, sorry, I got that, uh, I misspoke that, uh, you know, Dade County, all those different counties can be a local government, but so can the city governments. Now, let's go to local powers. Local powers, it varies. You'll have a lot more uh, variety within the local powers, um, and it's whatever the states give them, because remember, the state power they have the power to establish and regulate local government. So whatever the states say this local government can have, then that's what they have. That's the power that they have. And then some of the services, again, police, fire departments, uh, any roads, any city roads, such as Stribling, that's a local, that would be managed by a local government. Uh, utilities, Florida Power and Light, uh, Palm Beach Water, um, you know, if there, we have Olympia just to our north, that would be a 
local government um, when, when it came to chartering or allowing uh, that development to be placed there, that would be a local government. Um, recycling or recycling, uh, trash collection, um, all of those are local governments. You see a police officer, chances are it's local government. And to show the different powers, again, you have the federal government square, you have the state government and all, that, all of its responsibilities, you have the local government and all of its responsibilities. Now, I have drawn these to different sides to show you the different impacts it has on your life. The federal government, it's going to be more general. Its services and um, powers are going to affect you generally because it has to make laws and govern for the entire nation. The state government, as you saw with the Florida Constitution, it was much larger. Why? Because it's closer to your life, therefore it deals with things more uh, every day, day to day. And so that affects the entire state, and again you have the concurrent powers between the federal and state. And then you have the local government, which I've drew, drawn as a larger circle, because this affects you pretty much every day. And so the powers and what it does, it's going to be much larger. It deals with a lot more things because the local government will deal with sidewalks. The federal government will not. The state government will not. So this is going to have a larger impact. There's going to be more things the local government has to deal with. But that's okay. It was designed to do that because it was, it's closer to you. And so it is going to be more effective at that. The federal government will not talk about sidewalks, neither will the state government. So, that is the, that is the uh, local, state, and federal powers and a little bit of their services. We are going to look more into their services during this lesson. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask me that uh, tomorrow in class or after we view the video. And have a good day.